dum 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 Hello everybody, this is Red coming to you with a one of my commander decks, the first one that I built. It is Rafik of the Mini. Now I know most of you probably can't read a tagging. So this guy's a 3-3. He has exalted. Whenever a creature attacks alone, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. And his special ability, whenever a creature attacks alone, it gets double strike until the end of turn. He's a four color, three, three, so he's pretty nasty, a pretty good baiter on his own with some of the other exalted guys that we'll go over shortly. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the mana base, which is just a few basics for ghost quarters and fetching up when you need them. A couple of duels for each colors. I'm using a couple of the temples specifically for the scry, which is always good to have a scry available. More duels. My one fetch that's in the deck. Comes in a play tap, taps for colorless. Pay two, tap it, sack it. You get a forest and a plane and put them into play. Untap. No, sorry, tapped. And then shuffle. A good two for one there. And of course, you got your any colors. A couple of vivids that give any colors. A couple of man lands here. Good old ink moth. You can make for one mana. You can make him a one one flying with infect. So, once you get three or four exalteds out there and hit them twice with this and put them out of the game, pretty good. Uh, Stirring Wildwood. Three mana becomes a three four with reach. Good old Munivault, one to activate, becomes a two two. That's all creature types, if that is ever relevant in a game. Celestial Colonnade, five mana becomes a four four elemental with flying and vigilance. Good way to kill them with some exalted. A lumbering falls. Four mana, it becomes a 3-3 three, three elemental with hexproof. Always good. Opponent not to be able to target them. Couple utility lands here. Uh, blue and a white, tap it. Exile a creature from my graveyard to get a 1-1 one, one spirit with flying. A land that you can pay five, sacrifice it and draw two cards off of, which is really good late game. Little card advantage is awesome. Of course, an Opal Palace. Pay one, tap it, add a mana of any color. Put your commander's identity. If it's spent to play your commander, he gets a plus one, plus one counter for every time he's been cast out of the command zone. Pretty good. Grove of the Guardian, pay five. Tap two untapped creatures you control. Sacrifice, Grove of the Guardian. Put an 8-8. Elemental with Vigilance onto the battlefield. Nice, good beater. Mystifying Maze. Pay four, exile an attacking creature and opponent controls. Beginning of the end step, comes back into play tapped. Good for dealing with opponent's creatures that he's trying to beat you with. Cathedral of War. Land with Exalted. Really good in an Exalted deck. And Vesuva, a land that becomes a copy of whatever land you so wish. Now wait till your opponent gets uh, Dark Depths in play and then start removing ice counters from it or make another Citadel of, or Cathedral of War for the Exalted or just any good utility land that might happen to hit the field. Next we have the Mana Rock and Mana Dorks. You got one soul ring because that's a auto include for any commander deck. We got the zero two for two bird tree that don't fly. We got the zero three hex proof defender for two bird shrub that doesn't fly. And then we got the good old bloom tender, which is probably the best mana dork in 
the format. 100% unless you're playing straight green, then you're dumb for putting it in. Next we have our Exalted Fellows, which most of them don't do anything special, so we'll just run through them. One, one for three, tap a white, tap him, deal one damage to attacking a blocking creature. A one, three for two, one, one for one, two, one pro black for two, one, three with a reach for three, one, one flyer for two, three, three trample for th four, a two, four flying for five, one, one for two for a blue. He cannot be targeted till end of turn. And a 2-2 two, two for four. 2-2 two, two first strike for two. None of which are really good on their own, but with the Exalted makes them pretty darn nasty. We got the Noble High Art. He fixes our mana and he has Exalted and he's just all around awesome. A Frontline Sage. An 0-1 for three. Tap a blue, tap him, draw, and discard. We're getting rid of the crap we don't want. 2-2 two, two for two. Pay one, colorless. Sacrifice him, destroy an artifact or enchantment because those are always annoying. 2-2 two, two for three. Tap, destroy a creature that dealt damage to you this turn. Always good to kill your opponent's stuff. A 4-3 flying for four that has Exalted and gives your other creatures Exalted, which if they already have Exalted, now they'll have Exalted, Exalted. And with 15 creatures in play that have double Exalted, that's just retarded. So yeah. Sovereigns of Lost Alara, a four or five for six. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you may search for an aura card, attach it to that creature, then shuffle. We'll go over the auras shortly. Five for a four, four flyer. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gets lifelink. A couple of enchantments here with Exalted. Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you may tap a creature. So get one of their blockers out of the way. Three mana, Exalted, and Cascade. So there's several one and two things in here you can Cascade into. Always good to get free stuff. And Finest Hour, five mana. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap that creature, there's an additional combat phase. So you get to smack them twice. Awesome. Next category are gonna be what I actually use to kill them with, probably. I have a two, four flying protection from creatures for four mana. Pretty good stuff. You have a 2-2 two, two for two. Whenever he attacks, he gets plus one, plus one till end of turn for each untapped creature you control, which we're wanting to attack with one anyway, so the other 10 just make him bigger. Good old Mirren Crusader, pro black and green, and he already has double strike, so even if our general dies five or six or 12 times and we can't cast him, we can still kill them with him with relative ease. Four, 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 four. When he enters, you gain four life. Could be relevant. Depends on how much of a beating you're taking. For a white and a green, sacrifice him to regenerate all creatures you control. Good for a board wipe, my own or theirs. We have a five, five for three with death touch and indestructible. That can't attack or block unless you control another creature power four or greater. But for three mana, another target creature gets plus two plus oh and trample until end of turn. And with the double strike and all the plus one plus ones from Exalted, trample is grade A pimp shit. And of course you got Thrun. A four four can't be countered. Hexproof. Regenerates. Yeah. He needs no introduction. 
Now for our auras that we can get with our Sovereigns of Lost Dolara are going to be Eldrazi Conscription, plus 10, plus 10, Trample and Annihilator 2. The Annihilator won't matter since it's already attacked, but the plus 10, plus 10, and Trample. This one's almost as good, plus 8, plus 8, and Trample. Five mana enchantment. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each card in your hand. At the beginning of your draw step, you get to draw an additional card. Card advantage is great. And a good old Shield of the Oversoul. Three mana. As long as enchanted creature is green, it gets plus one, plus one, and indestructible. As long as it's white, it gets plus one, plus one, and flying. A five, five flying Rafik is pretty nasty. And this is a three mana enchantment at the beginning of your turn, or at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put a one one counter on target creature you control. If it has three or more, flip it into a land. But you pay three and tap it, target creature gets plus X plus X and gains flying till the end of turn, where X is its power. Could be super nasty with some of the other stuff we got going on. Now, our board wipes are route because it can be cast at instant speed with a couple extra mana, which is always nice to surprise your opponents with. The very versatile six mana artifacts, enchantments, converted mana cost three or less creatures or four or greater, you choose two. So whatever you want gone is gone. A standard Day of Judgment. Supreme Verdict, can't be countered. Wrath of God. Akrama's Vigilance, six mana. Artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. And it cycles if you don't need it. Uh, another one that's kind of versatile, six mana, destroy all lands or all creatures, your choice. And destroy all non-land creatures that you can awaken and turn a land into a beater. I have a couple of single target removals cast out. Four mana flash. It's an oblivion ring for one extra mana with flash that cycles for a white. Oh, and it gets any non-land permanent. Swords to plowshares. Because you're playing white, you're playing commander, you gotta have a sword. Now this next card is supposed to be a path to exile, but I had to take it out for a modern deck, so I am running Condemn. Just to put those annoying creatures on the bottom of their owner's libraries. And then I have a utility creature, or no, control package <clears throat> two one for two mana pay two sacrificing destroy an artifact or enchantment because like i said earlier they get annoying an even mind sensor for all those people that want to fetch or tutor lynn vala for all those activated abilities on creatures that are now completely worthless theirs and mine a Stoic Angel, Flying Vigilance. Players can only untap one creature during their untapped steps, which is really awesome because we only attack with one anyway, so don't hurt us one bit. A Winter Orb. Allowing players to only untap one land per turn, which don't hurt us very much and will usually Make an opponent rip their hair out. Same with Static Orb. Three mana artifact. Players can only untap two permanents during their untap phases. Also extremely annoying. Dueling Grounds. Three mana. No more than one creature can attack. No more than one creature can block. We don't care. We only attack with one creature. And them only being able to block with one pretty much ensures ours is going to live. 
a spell scott because any deck with blue needs one yeah he's just awesome change the target of target spell or ability to spell skype for a blue or two life all day long and gideon just to make our opponents not attack us when they have big stuff out that's going to kill us then we have a few cards to draw everybody knows jace Uh, Rashmi is a really interesting card for this deck. It's 2-3 for 4. Whenever you cast your first spell of each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with your mana cost less than that spell, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you don't, put it in your hand. So you're either getting a free spell or you're getting a card in your hand. Both are really good. Um, a 2-3 flyer for 3. Whenever you cast a creature spell, convert a mana cost 3 or less to investigate, which gives you a colorless clue artifact token that you can pay to sacrifice it to draw. Really good stuff. And then Wargate. 3 mana and X. Search a library for a permanent card with convert a mana cost X or less. Put it into play. Really good stuff. And last, we have a little bit of library top manipulation with Jace, Unra Unraveler of Secrets, Nissa, Steward of Elements, and Path of Discovery. Well, this has been my Rafik deck. Hope you like it.